the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth, and for man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood, as a sign of covenant and peace. In the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of the Ur of the Chaldees. In the 13th century since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel. In the 194th Olympiad. In the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome. In the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar, Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace. Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins 
and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My very best wishes to all of you as we celebrate the great feast of Christmas. May Christ bless you and your families with his peace and love this day and always. We hear talk from time to time about the true meaning of Christmas. And a a quick check of social media this afternoon, I discovered that this is the chatter about the true meaning of Christmas, which I discovered. The true meaning of Christmas is family. The true meaning of Christmas is friends, smiles, health, 
well-being, and joy. The world searches and searches and searches for the true meaning of Christmas. But you have come to the right place if you want to celebrate the true, true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas is Jesus. It's just that simple. A simple word, one word, the name of the Son of God. In fact, if we look at the word Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas is right there in the word itself. You don't even have to look any further. Christ. You don't have to look any further. But the world continues to search and search, a restless search. What is Christmas all about? St. Augustine once wrote in his Confessions, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And really, that describes the world perfectly. Restless searching for a way to give a secular meaning to Christmas without reference to Jesus. And the restless search will continue until the world comes to realize the answer is Jesus. Without Jesus, all you are left with is a happy holiday, but not Christmas. Thank the good Lord for the gift of faith to know Jesus, to love Jesus, and to follow Jesus. That is why you are here, because you do true, know the true meaning of Christmas. God the Father gave the world the gift of his Son, and that is the greatest gift that we can give to others, to live and to practice our faith and to bring the love of Christ to others. How about that as a gift this Christmas, to give the love of Christ to others? Jesus is the model to follow, coming down from heaven, not to please himself, not to serve himself, but out of love for us, to save us and give himself for our salvation. That is true love a love which looks out only for the good of the other and not for the good of self. The true meaning of Christmas is Jesus, and we are here to celebrate God the Father's great gift to us for our salvation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father's great gift to us is his only begotten Son born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now through Jesus Christ, we, children of God, offer our prayers and our petitions. Joy is God's gift to all the world. May Christmas be for us and for all people a time of joy and peace. And may all the nations of the earth rejoice at the birth of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our celebration of the birth of Jesus be a time for renewed hope in our world. And may our joy and witness bring the good news of salvation to the whole human race. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. May we be thankful to our God for giving us a Savior born today, bringing good news of peace and reconciliation to all the people of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our families, may we experience peace in our families at this special time, and may the spirit of Christmas be with our families and communities in all the year ahead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, all, for the souls of the faithful departed, that they will be granted eternal peace in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the people of the Diocese of Charlotte for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us the abundance of your grace Hear our prayers that we always may be faithful in following in the footsteps of your divine Son, who leads us to eternal life with you. We ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, our patron, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.